He's got untapped potential. He's only run four times. Currently 25 to 1 for the Brown Advisory. Hello and welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel. We've hit 11,000 subscribers. A massive thank you from both me and Andrew. We want to keep the conversation up throughout the summer. Um, those watchers that aren't massive fans of the flat, probably me as well and, and you, Andrew, we're going to make a monthly video series where we put up a few horses for the 2022 Cheltenham Festival, preview some of the races, look back at the 2021 Cheltenham Festival um, and hopefully pick a few winners. That's the, that's the aim of the game. Yeah, exactly. Look, as you said there, me and you, we're going to make a festivus with the flat this summer, but uh, our, our main preference is the jump racing and there's still a fair bit of good national hunt racing to go this year. But at this time of the year, looking forward even 12 months' time, the, the dreams are still there. You see some of these big prices, and sometimes you can nick a, a big price or two, and hopefully we might find one over the next couple of months. We can build up a few, uh, a, a bit of a book together, and uh, hopefully before we start again in, in October time in the National Hunt season, we might have a, a few dreams uh, that, that hopefully will come to fruition come next March. If you do enjoy this video, please hit that like button. It massively helps the channel and uh, subscribe if you are new. Uh, the giveaway winner of the JP McManus Well Child Scarf, there's three of these made, uh, one for JP McManus, one for AP McCoy. I think I was very lucky to get it, but the winner is Aaron Carr. So Aaron, congratulations, you've won the scarf. If you can get in contact over on our Twitter, DMs will be open. Please send us your postal address and we'll get it out to you. So congratulations and uh, have fun with the scarf. I, I hope to see you wearing it at the festival in 12 months time. Okay, let's go into it. We've, we've both got three selections um, to, to kick things off. We wanted to make it big. I think every month we're not going to have three. Let's start us off. Give us a winner. We are 12 months away. It sounds ridiculous <laughs> that we're saying this. It, it, it feels like yesterday that we were previewing um, the, the Dublin Racing Festival. Now we're talking about the 2022 Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, look, you're trying to find value and bigger prices at this time of the year. It certainly, you know, no nobody's going to learn anything for us coming on here and telling people to back Bob Ollinger for the Marsh and Honeysuckle for the Champion Hurdle and, and these sort of bets. You know, you're trying to scour the markets to try and find something that's overpriced. I've landed it on the Festival Novices Chase for my first one. Uh, personally speaking, I didn't think the Albert Bartlett was that great a race. Uh, they didn't look to me like uh, the previous year where you're going, these look ideal, you know, uh, RSA horses. I, I, Vanillier was very impressive on the day. I would be shocked if we're sitting here in 12 months' time, though, and he's gone and won a brown advisory. So I'm, I'm prepared to take that on and take it on with a horse that hasn't run at the festival in Gentleman's Game, who you can still get at 33 to 1 with one bookmaker. I think he's 28 to 1 with, with others. He ran a super race at the Dublin Racing Festival, finishing second to Gallard de Manil, who ran a, a good race in the Ballymore uh, behind Bob Allinger. I think that form's pretty strong. He, he missed Cheltenham. Mouse Morris is a very old-fashioned trainer and loves the staying chasers and he'll have been trained for chasing in time. He was a point-to-point -point winner, but he showed an awful lot of improvement this year. We might see him one more time this year. And if he was to go close, potentially, in the three-mile grade one novels hurdle at Punchestown, he certainly wouldn't be 33-1 to one for next year, that's for sure. I think he'll be a better horse over a fence. And as I say, I just wasn't so convinced on the Al Albert Bartlett. I don't know what your take on it was, but I'd be willing to take on those horses going novice chasing. And Gentleman's Game may well be a lurker at, at a big price of 33s. When a, when a horse like Vanillier wins the Bartlett and you've not given them much thought in the, in the process, it, sometimes you can be guilty of just rubbishing the race off. Oh, it was rubbish. The winner's done nothing. I think Vanillier is a good horse, but... Um, I'd like to see him back it up again at, at Punchestown or somewhere like that to, to, for me to, to really see it. And it sounds ridiculous. He's a Cheltenham Festival winner. I've actually got one in the same race. Very keen on Gallopin des Champs for Willie Mullins. And then he was ninth behind Appreciate It at the Dublin Racing Festival. And, and, and the talk between the, the Mullins camp and, and Ruby Walsh, especially on, on Road to Cheltenham and stuff like that, was he's so well handicapped. I think Patrick Mullins and Ruby Walsh said that he was the most handicapped horse uh, at the Mullins yard going into the festival. I cottoned on to that. He won the Martin Pike and, and, and that step up and trip seemed to really help. He travelled so well. He looked like he stayed and he's a big imposing horse and I think he could be better for a fence. Previous Mullins winners of the Martin Pike and, and there's Kalata Vic, there's Don Poli and Sir de Champin in recent years and all three of them made very good three mile chasers. 
although Carter Vick's a bit of a nutter and he never really kicked on. <laughs> Don Poli won, won this race and he's got untapped potential. He's only ran four times, currently 25 to 1 for the Brown Advisory. Very sound logic there, especially with Willie Mullins past winners of that race that, that have gone on. Uh, I know that I think when they, they acquired this horse from France, I think they believed he was a grade one horse. He's maybe been a little bit backward this season, but he put it all together and the fact that him and Langer Dan, and Langer Dan was probably a very well handicapped horse going into the Martin Pipe with only a five pound mandatory penalty for the Imperial Cup. They, they were miles clear, they were in a furlong clear a third. So they were obviously two very smartly handicapped horses. He was off, I think, 142. So he was near enough the top of the weights as it was. So he wouldn't have to improve, a, you know, an unbelievable amount to, to make up into a grade one win, grade one novice chaser next year. I think he's a shorter price for the, the, the Marsh. It was a bit like on Viral in this season where they just didn't want to take him on. Um, and... Potentially that could happen again if Bob Ollinger takes to offence like we think he will. Nothing's going to be beating him in that. Yeah, looking at the at the supreme novices hurdle now, and I know sometimes it's maybe not the most prudent thing to go to go in massively on these novice hurdles, but one that I think is is worth an each way bet at the prices uh, is the champion bumper fourth three stripe life. Uh, you, you can get thirty three to one. I thought he ran a cracking race. Now I know the front two have pulled well clear and they dominate the the markets for the. The, the Supreme and the Ballymore Sir Guard and Kilcrush but you know you saw from Fernie Hollow last year you know getting injured it's not as simple as these horses just rocking up and going on to win again uh, Three Stripe Life I thought ran a super race given the circumstances he unshipped Jack Kennedy uh, on the way down to the start he actually took a beeline left and, and crashed into a pole uh, and unshipped him he was then very free in the early stages of the race they didn't go much of a gallop and I think as a result, his performance can certainly be upgraded. I think if he was, a, you know, in a year's time, for, for example, I don't think there'd be any way he'd be finishing behind L.A. Bell. Uh, so I think that, that can be upgraded. You're getting a much bigger price, like Sir Gerard's. Five to one, I believe, for the Supreme Novices Hurdle. That's a fairly poor price to be investing in 12 months out, tying your money up. Uh, I think Street, Three Stripe Life has the scope to improve very well. The way he won his bumper debut at Navan was very taking, and I know a lot of people that do the times were very taken by that performance. And, and I think quite a lot of shrewd judges thought he had a big chance in the bumper. Uh, he was just too inexperienced to do himself justice. I'd love to see him get one more run, maybe in the grade one bumper at Punchestown, uh, to, I suppose, just give him a little bit more experience before going novice hurdling next year. Uh, but he certainly won to keep the right side of. And I'd be very, very disappointed if he doesn't make up into a grade one novice hurdler next year. The one that I quite like is Glenn Zavantram in the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. I think she's currently... 33 to 1 for the race, I will be backing her each way. Now, this one you do have to take with caution because if she wins at all this season, she won't be eligible for the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. But there was a horse that goes by the name of Contatista who placed in the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. She hadn't won all season and then she went there as a second season novice and sluiced in. I think Glenza Vantram um, could be potentially another version of her. She's had four runs so far, up against the boys, she was fourth. Beaten a long way by Blue Lord on debut. Then she was second behind Statler at Leopardstown. Second behind Mr. Incredible at Nace. And uh, sixth in the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. But I did think she, she ran really well for a long time in that race. I know you backed her and, and you put her up in the video. So I'd be keen to get your thoughts on that. She was keen. She seemed slightly immature as well. And um, that I think that cost her lengths. And, and if she can improve and she can mature for, for a year older. And hopefully she remains a novice. I think the 33 to 1... Is it will be a massive price and, and and if she goes to the race she's not lacking speed i think if they can get her to settle she'll stay and uh, another year um, and another summer on her back and she could be a bigger better and, and, and fitter horse what were your thoughts on glenza bantram in the mayor's novices hurdle because i know you're very very keen yeah look uh, overall a, a shade disappointing i backed her at fancy prices and she seemed to be well fancied for the race she does seem to be th this mare that she obviously works a little bit better at home than maybe she's provided on the track so far because Willie Mullins is very sweet on her every time he talks about her. Uh, she was, though, she was a shade keen. Look, looking back at previous renewals of the Mayor's Novices Hurdle, uh, it tends to be a, a race that they go off maybe a shade quick and suits a closer. Concertista came from well off the pace, tell me something, girl. Even the likes of Let's Dance and Limony in years gone by have come from well off the pace. Uh, so the fact that Glenza Vantrum was right up in the van, I think that performance can be upgraded. Her jumping 
was better at Cheltenham than it has been, but still needs a... She, she was careful. You know, she wasn't winging flights of hurdles. She was kind of going in deep and, and getting over them grand. Uh, but I, I, I'd subscribe to that. Obviously, you are taking a bit of a punt uh, that, that they won't go and win a race between now and the end of the season. You'd like to see her potentially rock up in a couple other grade one races and she might run okay but but not win and, and they might have a crack with it next year but certainly she, she's a mare I quite like this year so I, I wouldn't be putting you off have, having any sort of uh, money on it at 33 to 1. It, it's a big price considering if the season finishes and she hasn't won a race I think she automatically is a 16 to 1 shot for next year uh, even by June time um, if she hasn't gone and won a race by now. That's my thinking. 33 to 1 could look big. And if she ran in the, the, the Grade 1 um, novices hurdle for mares at the Punchestown Festival, maybe, hopefully, she can finish in the, in the first three but not win it. Um, and then she'll enhance her reputation and then go into next season as a second season novice. And I have no doubt that if she goes into next season as a second season novice, she probably will be aimed at this race. So that's the exciting thing. And that's why I'm so keen. One, in the arc all you've got. I do. And I suppose some people might be looking at this going, well, why are you taking on appreciation? And it's simply just a price thing. Look, it, I'm sure you probably think the same. It's the same with the likes of appreciated Bob Ollinger. You know, if they turn up in these races... They're going to be very hard to beat, um, but they're, you're getting a pretty poor price, you know, 3 to 1, 7 to 2, 12 months out. And there's a horse that's hopefully going to be running next week at Aintree. And I know some people were, were given out that I fell into the Paul Nichols trap with, with Brave Man's game. But I think he's got a smashing horse on his hands here. We've taken a turn here. Yeah, I'm becoming like you. You're going to be putting up Dan Skelton horses for the festival next uh, year. Would you relax now? Um, <laughs> if, only, if only the novice handicap chase was still around, you'd think third time lucky would win that next year. Um, but no, no, I think this Mon Morale is a big tool of a horse. Uh, the way Paul Nichols' horses are, are usually campaigned, I have no doubt that this horse will go novice chasing next year, even though he's only a four-year-old going five. Uh, I think he, he's got an awful lot of ability. If I, I know it may come as a, a bit controversial, but if you put my, you know, if you put me at gunpoint, I think Mon Morale would have won the Triumph Hurdle this year if he ran in it the way it, it has ended up going on a cross form line with, with Nassalam and Adagio. He'd have finished ahead of Adagio, and that wouldn't have been that far um, behind Quilixias or, or right beside him. With the going into the race, I thought Zanahir would would run a lot better than he ended up doing so, and I think Zanahir is better than that. Uh, but just the way the race has worked out, I just can't get over Mon Morale the last two starts. I caught him down when he run won the uh, listed not uh, juvenile herd at Doncaster earlier in the season. He made an absolute haymaker of a mistake at the second last at Doncaster on deep ground. And you're thinking, oh, geez, has he, has he given the race away? There was a horse almost upsides him at the time. And within around 10 strides, he'd latched back on the bridle and went three or four lengths clear. And I kind of went, that's, that's some horse. Then he went to Haydock. And I've been quite a fan of Nassalam this year. But my lord, he threw him out with the washing. Um, there was, it was a really special performance. And I just think if he goes to Aintree next week, which I think the plan is to run in the grade one juvenile hurdle, I think he'll win that, because I'm not sure the likes of an Adagio will rock up. None of the Irish horses, I don't think, will be there either. And if he goes and hacks up in that, wins by 5-6 lengths, you're getting 50-1 to 1 for next year's Arkle. We've seen with Paul Nichols with the likes of Mastermind to Zerti up. I know those were years ago, but he does like sending these horses over fences very early in their career. I think 50 to 1's a mad price, because if he goes and wins, and wins impressively next week, like I think he will... I think he'll be half that price, maybe even 16 to 1 for next year's Arkle. Mon Morale, I think he's a really, really serious horse. I'm hoping he can uh, run a big race. And I could think of much worse things to do than having a couple of quid on him each way at 50 to 1 for next year's Arkle. Unbelievable. What a turncoat. Well, it's like you with your Shakam Porsoir, Defi de Soy U turns last year. You, know, <laughs> you, you think for all the world to. St- this, that and t'other, but I can't wait to be trumping Mon Morale next season with Harry Cobton on board, my, my new favourite man in the saddle these days. Um, you look, I, I, think he's, yeah, I think he's a seriously good horse, and like, just with Paul Nichols, like, this horse isn't going to stay hurt. Like, 
Like, Paul Nichols has no interest in running horses in a champion hurdle or, you know, the Aintree hurdle or something like that. So this horse will go chasing next year. He mightn't be good enough, but 50 to 1, I think, is a big, big price for a horse of a lot of ability. Definitely is a big price about him. And uh, I'm, I'm a bit annoyed, actually, that, that you managed to sneak him in there before I could. Um, so I think that's why I'm so bitter. Uh, the one that I've actually got, funnily enough, is in the Arkle. Um, and it's not appreciated. I think with, with horses like appreciate it, you can easily get trapped in and look at this year's festival. And there were short price favourites like On Violin, Shishkin, Monkfish. And they just short and short and short and went off ridiculous prices and, and won other than On Violin. Um, and, and thinking that could happen again next year. But having these horses sound and, and in the right shape for the Cheltenham Festival is, a, is an art, and that's why these trainers are so good. And unfortunately, things go wrong, and, and if things do go wrong, there will be horses to wait in the wings, like a Chantry House when Envire Island fell, and that hopefully uh, could provide a bit of value. And the one that I've gone for in the article is Duzart, trained by Nicky Henderson. We've only seen him once, and that was beating Soaring Glory on debut at Newbury. Um, and that was in a novice hurdle on his first start. And for a horse to, to beat a better hurdle winner on his first start around Newbury, that takes some doing. And he was very impressive. And, and he beat him very convincingly. He made Soaring Glory um, look pretty average. And, and I spoke to, to Billy, the assistant trainer at Nicky's, and, and he was very keen and said that he could be one of the best novices they had. Just on the odd chance that something goes wrong with Appreciate It, there will be horses waiting in the wings, the likes of a Mon Morel and hopefully a Duzart as well. He's currently 25 to 1 with Unibet, I'll be backing him each way. Um, I'm not a mad punter like you, Andrew, and uh, straight on the nose at 50s, absolutely crazy. Irresponsible, that is, that is irresponsible. Uh, well, we want, we want people to back winners here, Josh. It's a winner's <laughs> business we're living in. Uh, very true, but 25 to one dues art uh, with Unibet for the Arkle, that'll be my final selection. Now, this is going to be a, a fairly short video. I hope you did enjoy it uh, we've got ink tree and punches down to come up and these horses hopefully will feature not all of them i know do um was injured and is out for the season but horses like a, a glens of antrim a galloping des champs a mon Mural, a gentleman's game uh, they could all enhance their credentials at these festivals so if you're backing them now it's going to be tense moments isn't it when you're watching them at punches town and, and, and fingers crossed that they put in a good performance and and in fairness, fingers crossed Glens of Antrim doesn't win. Um, <laughs> you will see me mortified if she does. Hopefully there's one that she's just too good and, and maybe tell me something girl can confirm the form. That's what I'm hoping. I hope you did enjoy this video. There's football channels out there that do um, season predictions where they, they try and predict the table. What we're thinking of doing is, is taking that concept and, and moving it to horse racing and looking at the grade ones at the 2022 Cheltenham Festival a year out. It sounds ridiculous. And trying to predict and then looking back on it after next year's festival and, and seeing how we did. So if you were keen um, to, to see that and, and to hear our thoughts on all of those races, please do hit that like button and let us know down in the comments. It would be greatly appreciated. But thank you very much for watching. We'll see you um, next video for a Fairy House preview. Indeed, looking forward to the Irish Grand National next weekend. It should be very good. And there could, could be more Paul Nolan propaganda.